Good evening, this is ENCA Moneyline, your money guide. My name is Sikim Gabadee. Coming up on the show tonight. The Fashini Group sets its eyes on growth in Europe. We take a look at the business stories that made news this week. And we hang out with an entrepreneur who makes money while you enjoy South Africa's favorite tradition. But first, your top stories. With Woolworths finding much success after its foreign acquisition, Fashini Group is now following suit. The South African retailer has agreed to purchase UK clothes chain Phase 8 in an effort to expand its brand in Europe. It will fork out 2.4 billion rand for an 88% stake in Phase 8. The UK store offers a range of evening bridal wear and accessories aimed at the woman between 35 and 55 years old. In South Africa, the ranges will cater for mid to upper income customers. South African retailers have been struggling to grow without acquisitions as high inflation and unemployment reduced consumer spending. Independent PGM producer Northern Platinum has suspended its Zonderende mine operations in Limpopo. The mine says this is to ensure the safety of workers and company assets during a strike. The National Union of Mine Workers says its members downed tools on the 13th of January and the workers' demands are policy related. The company said in a statement that operations were stopped over fears of intimidation, assault and threats of violence towards non-striking employees. A look now at the business stories that made news this week, and I'm joined by economist Mandla Maliga. Mandla, thanks so much for your time today. I think undoubtedly the biggest story this week was Eskom. Absolutely. And, uh, and the meaning of this for the economy. Yeah, I think um, the biggest story has been Eskom, and it came out uh, again in one of its quarterly reporting on the state of the system. And it is true that the system is under duress, it's under pressure, severe pressure for that matter. It becomes worse if your unplanned maintenance is over and above your planned maintenance, which means really, honestly, inevitably, you may possibly run load shedding. Now, this is an irony that where you apply a bitter medicine to mm. correct the system, um, um, is to prevent really the, the, the system to collapse completely to cause blackouts, as we saw in the likes of India. But nevertheless, I think it's going to impact uh, on the economy very negatively. Yeah. Already last year, we estimate that we could have, have grown by about 1.4, 1.5%. Yeah. Now, this year, we're expecting about 2.5%. Perhaps that figure is going to have to be revised down. Mm. Uh, perhaps maybe closer to about 2%. If anything, just shy of about uh, above 2%. So it's going to hit the economy from industries, mines, commercial spaces, municipalities, and residences. Absolutely. And of course, we saw um, the manufacturing output data that came out for November. Not only were they impacted by uh, the one-month strike in the, in the engineering sector, but also impacted by the electricity shortage. Yeah, I think we all agree within the economic fraternity that yes, it is true. Uh, amongst others, it was power shortages that hit our manufacturing. And uh, this is a decline, really. It's, that's why it's worrying. On a year-on-year -year basis, we're talking about a contraction of about 1.3%. Um, um, however, three months to end um, November has been fairly positive. Mm. So we, um, we imagine that at least the fourth quarter uh, GDP numbers could be in impact impacted uh, positively. The concern, of course, is about um, business confidence indicators that we have been seeing over the past two weeks that seem to indicate that businesses are going to continue to sit on capital that they could be investing um, and creating jobs and so on. Yeah, amazing. I mean, um, if you want to increase your productive capacity, you want all your, 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 your variables to be in order. And amongst, chief amongst those really is electricity. Yeah. If you've got no uncertainty about the, 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 the certainty of, 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 um, of power supply, you may pack your capital. And yeah. uh, for that matter, we have seen the stock market running very hard. It's because now it's easier for you to purchase um, 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 a share or a counter uh, within the stock market and, and, pack your, and pack your money and increase the people ratios for that matter. So this is what has been happening by businesses. Until we get the, the, the systems correct, then we may in one way or the other correct the investment space. We're not the only ones in trouble. The World Bank also downgrading its global economic uh, forecast. Wh where do you think growth is going to come from this year? 
I think you now the World Bank, um, being the authors of many uh, economic um, um, books, they have read the, the, the world development and they know what they are talking about. Perhaps next week uh, in the World Economic Forum, they may even share some more. Uh, one, I think Europe is going to drag us down. Um, um, all of us are currently in deflation and their growth is not appetizing. Unemployment is near double digits level. But more than that, your second biggest economy in the world, that is China, if it dips below 7%, that's n equal to a recession in their own terms. So we're all relying now on the US space. They've done very good. Um, they've acted very swiftly in 2008, 2007 financial crisis by lowering interest rate quickly to boost the economy. So yes, the World Bank was correct to at least in a way to revise their growth um, numbers down. And finally, what did you make of the news on Thursday that the Swiss National Bank had uh, decided to depeg um, the Swiss franc from, from the euro? Does, is that another nail in the coffin for the eurozone? Absolutely. I mean, that was a, uh, well, it, it was a shock. I don't think anyone expected it yeah. within the market. And if you have checked immediately then the Swiss franc um, um, strengthened substantially against the euro. Um, and I don't think that will get very well um, to the euro region. But again, it's in, it's in anticipation that there's a possibility of a QE equivalent uh, in the euro area. Well, one way or the other, I don't know whether it's going to perhaps be to uh, uh, perhaps prove to be the, the, the medicine that the euro need, or is it too late? We know that it's may perhaps it may be that that what the euro needs, but it may be uh, too, too late, late and too little. All right, we'll leave it there. Thanks for your time, economist Manja Malika. Now, Egypt's stock market received a massive boost this week. The country's main index, the EGX30, increased by 2.5% on the back of the introduction of exchange traded funds. This week, Egypt introduced the trading of exchange-traded funds for the first time. It's part of efforts to encourage foreign investment and boost liquidity. ETFs are traded like a stock but allow investors to cover markets in various sectors at a cost lower than other investments. Other advantages include exemption from securities transfer tax, can be bought and sold quickly at a lower cost, less risky because capital is spread out. In Egypt's current system, the exchange-traded funds can be acquired from the 30 shares within the EGX30. The head of the exchange says the launch is a strategic move to introduce a new financial tool which would allow the Egyptian capital market to increase its presence on the international investment map. We expected that the beginning of 2015 would see a great increase in share prices. When it was announced that the fund would enter the stock market, there was an increase in the index due to the buying of shares. Of course, it's very clear that this has created a turning point in the index. It is a breakthrough that we haven't been able to reach since 2008. The EGX is expected to list 10 new companies during the first half of 2015. After the break, we take a look at small business tax. You're watching ENCA Moneyline, your money guide. Do stay with us.